Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Dimes with Dara on the Joy Slot Podcast, brought to you by irishsportsdaily.com. I am your host, Greg Flamong, and my co-host, again, as always, is Dara Mabry. We have a very special show today. We have Hall of Fame head coach Muffet McGraw on the show, and we are going to talk to her about um, her statue. But when we set up the interview, Dara, there, there was not a statue unveiling, and now there is. And we have a long-standing tradition on this show that everyone knows about. If you have a statue unveiled, we need to talk about that. So we are going to talk to her about that. We're going to talk to her about the current team, and we're going to talk to her about leadership. Uh, and she's one of the best leaders uh, in college basketball, men or women. And so if we're going to have her on the show, we need to talk about that. Um, so it's going to be a real fun conversation. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning into this. If this is your first time catching us, please hit the like button. Please hit subscribe. Please hit the notification bell so you know whatever it is we are going live or when we are releasing a video. Uh, the football season is wrapped up, so there's going to be a lot more uh, basketball content coming your way on this channel. You're going to want to check it out. Uh, we, I haven't talked to you in a little bit, Dara. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. I hope it went very well for you. Uh, did you get to spend a lot of time with family out in uh, South Bend? Happy Thanksgiving to you as well and everybody watching. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, mine was pretty chilled out. I kind of just cooked by myself. The Women had a game at Ball State. So Correct, yes. You know, but I mean, that's nothing new. Haven't been able, like as a student athlete, especially in basketball season, you can never really celebrate Thanksgiving. But I was able to be around uh, my friends, the team, um, and my sister, which was really nice. So yeah, it was a successful Thanksgiving. Quieter, but I didn't mind at all. Fantastic. Well, good for you. Good job by you on that. Um, we, I, I was in uh, Chicago uh, for part of it, I was out in South Bend for the Wake Forest game, so I got to take that in. And then we we got home and we we did the family thing, and it was real nice. Um, yeah. So it, we we had a very good time with that. Uh, but we have a lot to talk about. We haven't talked to, we haven't talked since uh, Sonia Citron got hurt. She had she had a knee injury, and uh, it looked it looked not good. Um, I was actually texting you that night, like, "Are you okay?" Because it was right around the the end of the court where you hurt your knee last year. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it was difficult for everyone to watch that. But we need to talk about that, and we're going to talk about that with Muffet. Uh, but speaking of giving thanks, Dara, we need to give thanks to some of our sponsors who sponsor this show, and uh, and they make all this possible for us. And one of those sponsors is uh, ESQ Clothing for the very special. Uh, promo out for all of the ISD listeners and customers uh, and for their special bamboo dress shirts this holiday season. No better gift for your husband, father, brother, son, nephew, whoever it may be. You've seen ESQ's bamboo dress shirt on your favorite Notre Dame players and coaches. The world's most comfortable bamboo dress shirt made of sustainable bamboo fibers. The bamboo shirt is naturally odor resistant, wrinkle resistant, and even machine washable. Also three degrees cooler than cotton, so you can sweat it out watching games uh, the remainder of the season. So it's getting down in the final two minutes of a, of a women's game or a men's game. You're getting nervous there. You got your, your got you bamboo dress shirt. It's going to keep you cooler. Get ahead of the holiday season and use ISD25 to get 25% off your online purchase at esqclothing.com or visit God Chicago Showroom to get your perfect custom fit. And uh, our other sponsor, Dara, uh, some people that some someone you know very well, uh, VSR Media, which is founded by Notre Dame pregame host and Emmy Award winning anchor Vahid Saad Razade. VSR Media provides professional and cinematic video and photo, whether you're looking for a collegiate or pro-level highlight reel, have a personal story to tell, or are aiming to diversify and grow your business, VSR Media specializes in short and long form video storytelling, social media management, and website design. VSR Media also captures professional headshots, senior, and sports photos. Contact them at vsrmediacompany.com. Mention Irish Sports Daily to receive 20% off your first project. Visit them online or give them a call at 574 800-9106. All right, Dara, that's enough of the particulars there. Let's get to the main event in an interview with Coach Muffet McGraw. All right, everyone, we're very happy to welcome onto the show head coach, former head coach, former women's head coach, Muffet McGraw onto the show. And uh, when, again, what I said in the intro, you, you didn't have a you didn't have a statue uh, that was going to be unveiled when we set this up, and now you do. I think this is a statue that people wanted uh, as soon as uh, Enrique hit the shot 
again in, 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 on Easter uh, to win the national championship in 2018. People wanted this uh, statue going up then. It's coming up December 17th outside the Joyce entrance. Um, I wanted to talk to you about that. W what does it mean to you uh, personally to have something, an honor like that uh, at Notre Dame? Well, it's an incredible honor. It's very humbling. And it gives me a chance to look back and thank and think about all those players. They had so many wonderful women, so many talented and smart, just really great teammates, uh, so many all Americans and kids that just came along and, and walked onto the program. There's so many people I have to be thankful for. All my coaches and assistant coaches, we've had so many great coaches through the program. It's something you never do alone. It, it's something that you always have somebody around you, somebody helping you out. And certainly this is a time when you have to appreciate all the people that went into helping to build our program. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk about why, uh, why someone gets a, uh, a statue outside of something, right? So you won two national championships at Notre Dame, nine final fours, 936 career wins as a head coach, uh, 840, 848 of those came at Notre Dame. Uh, you're one of 13 women inducted to the NACIF basketball hall of fame. And so you were inducted in, in uh, 2017. Uh, and then you won a national championship, which is a heck of a flex on that. Um, so that's, that's how something like this happens. Do you ever dream of something like this when you get into coaching, right? Like you, you, you were, you were a basketball player at St. Joe's and we're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, and then you get into coaching. When do you, does it ever occur to you that I'm, I'm having like a very special coaching career? Like when, when does that occur to you? And when do you feel like, wow, like I, I'm, I'm a pretty special person, right? Like it has to, that has to be meaningful. Well, I don't think I've gotten there yet, but I think, uh, you know, I started my career because I graduated and I wanted to stay in the game and a high school job opened. And from my very first practice, I thought, I think I found my life's work. I loved it. I love practice. I love being around the team. I love watching games, watching film and then heading up to Lehigh for my first head coaching job. But uh, coming to Notre Dame. Matt and I came out here and we thought, you know what, we'll give it five years. If it doesn't work out, we can always go home. So I don't know that my aspirations were were that high. I wanted to build a program. I wanted to have a team that got ranked in the top 25. I wanted to go to the NCAA tournament. We never did that when I was at Lehigh. Yeah. Back then, they only took 32 teams to the tournament. We weren't one that was going to be going. We didn't have an automatic bid in our conference. So coming to Notre Dame, I had all those opportunities. And there was a, a little bit of pressure, but at that time, People weren't really watching. You, you really, you could make yeah. a lot of mistakes. And that's what I was able to do at Lehigh, make a lot of mistakes with nobody watching. Uh, you're the female, first female sports figure to have a statue at the University of Notre Dame. Uh, what, what does that mean to you? Well, I think it's great for women. I, I think that yeah. a lot of women are, are getting behind the idea because obviously we've celebrated football and we've had such a great tradition of football. And it's great to see now we have a, a, an amazing tradition of women's basketball and really all of our women's sports have done really well. So I feel like we've kind of cracked the ceiling a little bit, opened the door a little bit for, for some other women. And it is really, it's it's great to be honored in this way. It's very humbling it's a little overwhelming. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to walk by it. I think I may find a route that that takes me through the Joy Center, so I don't have to actually ever look at it as I'm going by. Um, but I, I think it's really it's great for women, especially at Notre Dame, a place that uh, you know only allowed women in through Father Hesburgh back in the early '70s. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, you have the, there is a Mabry on this show. There there have been three. Uh, that one on the current coaching staff. And uh, Marina uh, was a part of the uh, national championship team in 2018. Um, so Dara, I mean, it, it's uh, it's it's awesome to have uh, Muff, Coach Muffin McGraw on this show. Um, what what is it what does it mean to you? Like, I, I think your family's been very important uh, to this this program, uh, the women's basketball program. Uh, what does it mean to you to have her honored in this way? Uh, you know, you were kind of talking. I, when we were kind of leading up to this conversation, you were talking about how special Coach McGraw is to you. She, you mentioned she's like family to you. So uh, kind of what does this mean to you and anything you wanted to say to Coach McGraw there on that front? I would say it's it's very special to me because she was the coach that even though I didn't play for her my first couple of years or, you know, I our paths at Notre Dame took a different path than my sisters did. It's very special because I watched her 
mentor and coach and be so much more than a coach for my sisters growing up. Um, I watched yeah. it for a total of eight years. And then I kind of started to live in it, even though she wasn't the head coach and Niel took on all, all of her tradition. It's very special because she's been a role model for me growing up. Uh, she taught my sisters things that I was able to take in from them, that they were able to teach me, that they learned from her that go way beyond the game. Um, and that's what's special about Coach McGraw is that when it's, it's just like having one conversation with her, have, you know, I've never told you this before, but it's like anything she says, you just look at her and you're like, I'm, I need to take in everything I can for, from this person because she's just special. You don't come across people like that. Um, and I know it's going to, it might be weird walking in and seeing your own statue there, but I know every single time I walk past that statue, what it means, um, not only to me right now, but to me as a younger girl and along with my sisters too. And I remember watching you when you were probably in fifth grade <laughs> and I was recruiting yeah. Michaela and seeing you on the same team on the bench and uh, just the whole, the whole crowd really enjoyed watching the whole family. And yeah. I was so blessed when Michaela said yes, which led to Marina, which led to you and, and your mom and dad have been just such super, they should write a book on how to be a parent of a student athlete. Because <laughs> they were amazing. And they did such a great job of, you know, giving me a little space and yet they were there to support me and, and talk with me if I needed to know about anything. So the Mabry family is very important to me. And a big part of our success comes between Michaela and Marina. Very, yeah, very true. She's referencing when my feet didn't touch the floor. We were all on the same <laughs> AAU team, all three of me, but I wouldn't play. Like they would just let me move up. And if the score, you know, we were up by a lot, I would get to go in the game. But my feet wouldn't touch the floor, but I would always make an effort to wave to her, Neil, and see it every single time. Every single time. Well, that, that's, that's, that's awesome. Uh, you know, uh, we've, Talked a lot about, uh, you know, the the three Mabrys. Um, I think you said Marina, she's the one. So Dara is the, uh, I, I pointed out this to her, but Dara is the uh, the all-time, uh, th she has the most threes in uh, in the family. She has over 300. And, and I guess Marina is always pointing out that she's played, uh, she played the fifth season. Uh, I would point out, and I, I don't, did I, I don't know if I told you this, Dara, but uh, you actually played in less games. You, you, uh, Marina has more games on you, so that makes sense. I, it, it absolutely yeah. does, and 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 I'll bet you if we looked up minutes, it would be so. I I think there's something there. I, I think there's something for you to go back, on Marina. I know she's very competitive. Uh, I had a chance. I, I told this story before, Muffet, but I had a chance to see her play in L.A. against the Sparks last year. Uh, very competitive person, right? Very uh, chirpy and 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 just. Uh, <laughs> You know, she went after it. And, and you made reference, Dara, too, that uh, she, you know, you were like, oh, yeah, I remember that game. And I was like, why did she say that? It, it, she was drafted by the Sparks and then she was traded. And that's why I think it, it was kind of like a special thing. Like, oh, I'm going to go yeah. show out. Uh, and, and she definitely did. I think she had five threes in that game. We talked about that before. So, um, but speaking of former players, uh, Neil Ivey, the head coach of the Notre Dame women's basketball team. I had a chance to talk to her on the show uh, a couple weeks ago. And, and what, what is it for you to, to see one of your, you know, you won a national championship with her. Um, she was the first national uh, national championship team and now she's leading the program. Um, you know, did you see it then? Did you see that kind of track in her and that kind of basketball mind, the teaching mind um, that would lead to her being in the position that she is today? Neil and I always had a special connection. I think I feel that way about my point guards, but I know with her, it went even deeper than that. And to have her as a player for four years and then with the injury, five years, it was a time when there was no social media and there were no cell phones. So you couldn't call your mom and yeah. talk to her every day. So I was more like the mom at that time because, you know, I was with them every day through her knee surgeries, rehabbing and, and getting her through all that. So we had a really strong connection. And when she went off to the pros and then I had a job open, the easiest hire I think I've ever made in my life, uh, having her come back to the team because I just get to watch her grow as a, when she came in as an assistant, 
you know, I said, you have one job, get Skylar Diggins to say yes. That is your only <laughs> job. <laughs> no, she did it very well. And then, you know, each year she'd get better and she'd take on more and more responsibility until finally I said, wow, she's ready to, to be a head coach. And I was worried because she had so many offers. People would call all the time. And I was really glad she was able to go to Memphis because what an opportunity to be in the NBA for a year and yeah. learn from some of the best in the business. So she's had uh, just a great chance to get away from Notre Dame for a year to see how other people do things and then to come back and to have an alum uh, and to have somebody that I care about so much running the program. Uh, it makes me feel good. Great. Uh, let, well, let's talk about the the current team. You know, she she had mentioned uh, when coaching at Memphis and being around uh, John Morant specifically, and the way that his play, he played and the way, the style of play that he played with, um, wanting to push the pace a little bit more. And um, you know, I I don't know that Hannah Hidalgo is like they they aren't similar in style really. Um, she's a much better shooter than he is, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, I think the stats would bear that out as well, but she is, she's someone who can push the pace and she can really put pressure on the team. Uh, but what have you seen, uh, from, from her, her squad so far this year, um, you know, introducing new bodies. And, and I wanted to ask you about that and how difficult that is because, you know, Anna DeWolf is, is a new player into the program. Obviously Hannah Hidalgo is a new player into the program. Uh, freshman uh, Emma Rich is, is playing big minutes now that Sony Citron, Citron went down. We can talk about that a little bit more. But what have you seen from them? And how hard is it to kind of transition new players into a program uh, you know, and play big minutes the, the way that Notre Dame is right now? The thing about a basketball team is one person can change the entire attitude, the entire culture of the team. So you have to be sure that you have a really strong culture built so that when these new players come in, the other players are going to say, okay, here's the way we do things here. This, yeah. These are the unwritten rules. These are how things are going to go in the locker room, uh, some things that you need to know. And you have to hope you have great leadership because that captain role is so important. That is the connection between the coach and the team. Um, you know, it's a partnership. She's the intermediary. You got to be able to talk to them. You have to be able to be honest and have trust. There's so many things that are more important than what happens on the court building that team right. chemistry, building that team culture, having that accountability and honesty. And I teach a class at Notre Dame on leadership, and I always talk about Marina Mabry and Enrique Ogumbawali because the, the honesty and the trust and the accountability, which are important for a championship culture, they embodied that. And so when Marina would go up to Enrique and say, are you going to get a rebound? We need you to play some defense. How about you do this? And Enrique would, would just accept it because she knew – Marina wanted to win. She cared about her. They trusted each other. And you have to have that person. And when Marina graduated, my first thought was, who's going to who's going to take over? You, you have to have that kind of player who's willing to hold everybody accountable, to be accountable for herself. And that is when you know you have a championship team. When players say, oh, we get along so well, I worry. Because I don't want a team where everybody gets along mm -hmm. so well. I want them to be able to go in the locker room and talk honestly, have a little conflict. Go at each other a little bit. Compete with each other. And that's the question I have for this team is who is that person that's going to stand up and hold everybody else accountable? So it's it's interesting you say that because I've heard on, on a number of occasions, you know, the leader on the team is like, they'll be very open about the fact that not everyone likes me, but they all respect me. You know, and, and I've heard that before. And, and, and I, it's interesting that you just brought that up. And Dara, I, I want to bring you in on this too because I, I think you had a similar question when we when we did the preview pod when they were going to play South Carolina, and and you and the, even the way that you were talking to me about that game is I think that you sensed that you didn't know where that was coming from either. Like you you almost wanted to kind of import yourself onto that because I think that was you on the team last year, and you weren't sure where that was going to come from. And, and it, you know, we talked about Sonia having to take on a lot and that's part of the thing that I think that she needs to bring. And I think that, uh, you know, that goes missing with her out of the lineup. Uh, but what have you seen from the team so far this year on that front and just in terms of finding that leadership? I think you could say right now that it's Hannah. Um, it's evident. And when you talk about someone that is going to hold people accountable and be vocal in that manner, there's different types of leaders. So like, if you know, yeah. Sonia Citron, you know that that's not going to be her. She is the same way on the court that she is off the court. You know, like you can't, that's not realistic to really ask somebody to be someone that they're not. 
Yeah. Um, I don't think Sonia is going to be the one that's going to rip into Hannah and say, are you going to get a rebound? Um, but Sonia is going to lead by example, which has helped them. And I love the leadership from Hannah. I think you could say right now that she is their leader, but at some point down the line, leadership also comes with experience. So I think you're going to need to see more leadership from Maddie Westbelt specifically. Um, and I think that that's, it's not showing right now, but I think later on that's going to be really important because yes, Hannah sets the tone defensively. Uh, she leads vocally and by example, and you know what you're going to get out of her every single game in terms of effort and attitude. However, at some point she's still a freshman and it is, it's okay to have your pack led by a freshman, but I think there, there needs to be more sense of, of expanded leadership. You know, because Hannah's going to run into issues at some point that, and it might not even affect her in the stat sheet, but it's just the game of basketball. You're going to run into issues that other people might not run into simply because you're not as experienced. Like you learn things by experience, by playing in more and more games. Um, and I think that in terms of controlling the game from what we've seen this year is when we get sped up, we turn the ball over mm. a lot. And I think that's where one of the biggest concerns of the team leadership is going to come into play. It's not necessarily going to happen right now, but it has to happen down the line is leadership from other people. Well, you're absolutely right. And being the great leader that you are, you totally understand that. And I agree. Hannah can be the leader on the court. Maybe she has that personality to grow into that job, but the locker room belongs to the seniors. And that is where Maddie Westfeld, as you mentioned, needs to be the one that she needs to run the locker room. She needs to run those team huddles. She needs to run things at practice. Hannah's going to have the ball in her hands. She needs to be the, the maestro and, and get everybody in the right spots. But it is not her job as a freshman to lead that team. That has got to fall to Maddie Westfeld. And I agree with you. I, I would love to see her step up and be that vocal presence. As as the coach, how do you do you do you go to Maddie? I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to put it. It's like, this is what Neil needs to do, but like, just from your, from your point of view, like, do you, would you go to the player and say, Hey, it needs to be you. Like you need to step up. Even, even if that's not her, you know, her personality or in her comfort zone. Well, and Dara mentioned that it's not everybody's personality. It's definitely not Sonia's right. personality to be that person who can right. do that. I think Maddie has it in her to be that person. Okay. You have to be able to bring it out of her. You have to be able to let the team know, this is how it's going to be. But she has to earn that with her teammates. She has to be the one who's doing it in practice. She's she's the leader because, as you mentioned, by example, she's the one that's always given it 100%. Everybody knows she's in there to win. Everybody knows how much she wants this. And so then they're going to listen to her. So I, I think it's really important that you have somebody that can bring everybody together because everybody can't do that. You've got it. That's why you have a couple of captains. You may have somebody that's going to one on one talk to everybody individually, democratically. Let's find out what everybody's thinking. You have that one person maybe who's going to be the talker. Um, everybody doesn't want to address the whole team. And you don't have to as a captain. We have all different kinds of leaders. And she doesn't have to be the one that talks all the time. But she needs to run that locker room. Um, on, on the point of of Maddie kind of stepping up and taking that role. I thought it was meaningful in the first game after uh, Sonia went down where there's a lot of, you know, you don't know how it's going to go. Right. And, and, and the team isn't sure what it'll look like. And Maddie in that game, uh, 31 minutes, 10 to 16 shooting three of three from three, eight rebounds, um, 24 points. And, and I thought that was a big game from a, just, it's going to be okay. And like that, that's a big one, I think, for the team as well, where if you're not going to be vocal out there, then you're going to be you're going to show up in the game itself and you're going to make big plays and you're going to be a big time performer for the team. And on that front, I thought that was a big one from Maddie. Well, what did what did you think about that, Dara? I think that's exactly what needed to happen. But now mm -hmm. it needs to keep happening. You yeah. need to be consistent um, when you're a leader. I mean, I could say I didn't have the best shooting percentage my last year before I got hurt, but Niel knew what she was going to get out of me every single day, whether that was yeah. in practice, in the game, in the locker room. Um, I think she, Maddie is, Maddie has, I think, highs and lows at times. And I think that her leadership will, 
really start to level out once she becomes consistent. So that was a really good game. And then I know, I think Ball State, she wasn't at her best. So I think when you come into a new leadership role, it's it's really hard at first because you feel like you absolutely have to be your best in order for other people to respect what you're saying and what you're doing. You know, you have to you have to be able to lead yourself first before you can lead others. And I think that the more consistent she gets and those the more 20 point games she has then her leadership will become easier yeah and you have to be in that position where you're saying bring it here give me the ball i will take us wherever we need to get to you can count on me and you might not shoot the ball well that game but you have to maintain that sort of attitude of of i'm the one i want to be the one and everybody doesn't want to be the one but Hannah wants to be the one. She she's fine. Yeah. She's taking a lot of shots. Uh, and and her and Maddie, I think, need to really get some chemistry together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Hannah definitely wants it. I mean, I, that that's been evident in every single game, right from the jump. I mean, she she has an attitude of like, I want to, you know, like people are always saying like, I'm I'm him or I'm her or whatever, and and like. That's that's her. Like she has that attitude. Like she wants to she wants to put the program on her back. Like it's actually like refreshing in that way, but it also you know makes you nervous, right? Like she's she's young and she needs a, you know a break there. Um, and you know what? You I, I wanted to bring this up later, but you've you've kind of touched on it here about the concept of accountability, and and I think that is the most important thing from a leadership position is being accountable. And and teaching accountability and being able to import that accountability onto your teammates um, from from a Niel point of view as well, but also from a leadership point of view. And Sonia and and we've been talking heavy about Maddie here. How do you how do you teach that, Coach? It, well, it from you know you, you have a leadership course. How, how do you teach the concept of accountability to the team? Accountability starts at the top. So it's yeah. important for the head coach. And I used to read and listen to press conferences of teams that got upset. What did the coach say? Are they throwing people under the bus? Are they being accountable saying, you know what? I looked through my notebook. We didn't work on that enough. I had the scouting report wrong. We should have done this differently. So being accountable for yourself. I think that's one thing. And that's maybe even easier. The tough part for coaches is to hold their team accountable. Yeah. This is what we are going to do. These are the rules. These are the things you have to do. And you'll see some people aren't quite doing them. And then the team starts thinking, wait a minute, that was a rule, but she's getting away with it. And then she's not getting away with it. And I'm being punished. You're taking me out for this. You said that was important. She's staying in the game. And suddenly the head coach is not holding people accountable. And I think that's where a lot of coaches fail because they aren't able to set those rules to be disciplined, to get the team to understand everybody has the same rules. We're all holding each other accountable. And until I would hold myself accountable and I would hold the team accountable. I couldn't expect them to do it to each other. So I would reward them for that. You know, we'd be in the huddle. I'd be like, whose man was that? Who got that offensive rebound? And there'd be like crickets in the huddle. And then I said, don't make me go to the film because you're going to pay if we have to show this on the film. And it got to the point where they would say, yeah, it was mine. And I would be like, okay, good. Now let's move on. Like, I'm not going to punish you. I'm not going to take you out of the game because you admitted you were wrong. So trying to kind of work that, like, it's good to be accountable. It's good to say that was my fault. So when we watch film, I would always ask questions. What could you do differently there? What what should you have done there? And I would tell them, like, it's important for you as the seniors on the team to lead that film session by saying, oh, look at that. I, I totally messed up on that. That was my fault. And then the freshmen are going, oh, so that's how things work. You, it's OK to say I made a mistake and it has to come down from the top. Dara, how, when did you get comfortable kind of in that accountability role as a, as a, as a leader on the team, not just at Notre Dame, but just in general, right? Cause you started, we, we talked about this before you've never, you've started every single game you've ever played in. Um, when, when did you get comfortable kind of being accountable to the, to the coach and then kind of filtering that down to the team? Growing up, I was, you know, my, the household that I was in, you kind of had no choice, but to accept mm. accountability. Um, because if you weren't, going to hold yourself accountable, you're going to have a sibling that was going to snitch on you. And then you were going to be forced to do it at some point. Yeah. Um, and then my freshman year, I was a point guard immediately, immediately with the ball in my hands. But then at Notre Dame, like talking about specifically my time here, I was a, on a new team and Niel was like, okay, well, I have the confidence in you. You're going to be the point guard. 
uh, our first year here during COVID with all these other obstacles and chaos. And I had no choice right away but to be comfortable with that. Um, it wasn't my natural position. I kind of grew up being a combo guard, but I knew at some point I was going to have to transition over to the one. Um, and I, like Coach McGraw was talking about before, like your point guard has to mirror what the head coach is doing. Your leader has mm -hmm. to mirror what she's doing. Um, and if Neil was going to hold people accountable, I had to become okay with holding people accountable early, which was a little uncomfortable because I was still trying to get to know personalities um, because I was on a brand new team. Uh, so I became comfortable almost right away, but I would say my last year and my senior year. And then when I got hurt, when I got hurt, sometimes I would crush over to the huddle and just rip someone apart. It was like night and day. Cause you know, when the game's taken away from you, you have a yeah. completely different perspective. Yeah. Um, so I would say right away. And then through each of my years, I learned so much about accountability, but I would say my last year was probably the fun one when it came to that. Did you, uh, Muffet, you know, pouring over some, uh, women's college basketball history as one does came across the uh the record books of the saint joe's hawks 1976 1977 saw a two-time captain uh by the name of muffet o'brien and i thought wow that that must be the someone that, i wonder if that's someone by another muffet another name and uh and and so that was you and you were a two-time captain at saint joe's and did you did so the guards thing right you were a guard there um did, did that kind of was that the birth of your kind of you know leadership role right like being a leader and kind of learning how to hold people accountable and having that filter down um, from your coach and, and kind of taking that on to your as, as a as a coach throughout your career well i think and dara knows this being from the east coast but when you're from philly it, it, it's easy to kind of start bossing people around i never really <laughs> had a problem with that while i was on the court uh, sarcasm is, is sort of like the native language of people from Philly. You better do it or you're going to hear about it. And I was that kind of point guard. I would throw the ball, I would hit people in the head with a pass if they weren't looking. I would, and then I would, you know, make sure they were looking next time. Um, but that's definitely where I got my start. And as a point guard, I think point guards make the best coaches because you're always used to watching the whole game and seeing everything. It's yeah. not like you're a post player and you have to wait you know, to kind of get involved in the game. So, yeah, I definitely think being a, a point guard as a player really led me to my coaching career. Okay. Um, let, let's let's segue that into the, the Hannah Hidalgo situation because she came in with a ton of fanfare. And I, I think it's – I'd say to say she's exceeded it. I mean, her numbers right now are really off the charts, um, not just from a – uh, like a, a, a accounting stats standpoint, but also an efficiency standpoint. Um, I, I, 25 points a game, 57% shooting, 48% from three, uh, f five rebounds a game, six assists, six steals. Um, we were mentioning before, she's on pace for uh, about 200 plus steals this year, which uh, as a former record holder at St. Joe's Muffet with 107 steals, one of, one of, one of three players in the history of the program with uh, triple digit steals in a season, one of, one of three. Uh, so it, it, you know all about uh, stealing the basketball. She's doing it at a rate that seems unsustainable, but let, let's let's find out. Uh, but what what have you seen from her? I mean, you obviously are very close to the team. You still follow the team very closely. Did she has she exceeded ex exceeded has she exceeded your expectations so far um, from what you thought was was possible? Yeah, I think it's a lot to come in with that weight on your shoulders of you are going to be the one in and, and an elite program. Olivia's not back. You're going to have the ball in your hands. You've come in with a lot of hype. You know, how are you going to be able to match that? And a lot of kids struggle with that. Hannah did not. She is somebody that was able to come in immediately. And she has a lot to learn as from yeah. a point guard perspective. And from a team perspective, it's hard to have your point guard average that many points that that's something that they've really got to figure out. I love her defense. That was the most intriguing thing to me. If you can get up and get on the ball and force the offense to come out a little bit further to get a little uncomfortable, you're going to have a great defense. And we have not ever been known as a great defensive team. And we, we still are not known as a great defensive team, <laughs> but she is somebody that can change that like Skylar Diggins did for my teams. If she can get up and really start the defense right at half court 
and make that offense uncomfortable. I think that's her great asset. Um, obviously, her skill, um, she, she can pass, she can score, she can get to the rim. Uh, she has so much talent, and I think she's already being talked about nationally as maybe one of the top three freshmen in the country, and certainly in the ACC as um, somebody who, who would – I likely, I think, would be the rookie of the year in the league, even though they include the transfers in that. But I think she still has a lot to learn of how to get that team together and how to, to make things happen and set people up. But she is somebody that I'm very comfortable with the ball in her hands. And that's what you want in your point guard. You want everybody to relax when they have the ball. And I think everybody can do that. Dara, what have you seen from her so far? Everything that I thought I was going to see. Mm. Um, you were, you were very confident. You, you were yeah. very, very confident. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, she's as good as advertised. She hasn't changed anything. I don't think she, she's very aware of herself. Um, and she's mature for a young woman, um, especially mm. in a role like that. So that's been really nice to see, um, that all that hype that you were mentioning, I don't, I could never see that really affecting her, which is nice because when you come in, you know, as a point guard, you're playing a lot of minutes, that social media thing and politics can kind of slap you in the face a little bit, especially if you don't like what people are saying. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine anyone not being a fan of hers, but it's really nice to see her, you know, handling herself um, and doing everything that we thought she was going to do. I think it's phenomenal that she willingly picks up the ball full court every single time and is making her presence known no matter what. And that's leadership. Um, that's knowing what you're going to get every single day out of somebody who plays such a pivotal, pivotal role in the team. So I'm, I'm excited. I've been very excited watching her, but I'm very excited to see her down the line, um, in really tough moments because she's such a mentally tough person. And as a freshman, I think that's like going to carry her throughout the, throughout the year, especially in postseason as a point guard on an elite team. Something that's coming down the pike, and I'll, and I'll put this to both of you. Uh, something that's coming down the road here is Sonia is going to come back. She the the knee injury. Uh, Neil gave an update on that. Uh, not serious. She said weeks. So that that seems like that's going to be healed up um, fairly quickly. So she's going to be coming back, and then and then Olivia is also on the mend, and she 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 may be coming back soon as well. And so in integrating them into the lineup with Hannah. Um, and I'll go to Coach McGraw first, and then I want to get Dara's thoughts on this, is how, how much of a challenge is that going to be? Because Hannah's been very ball dominant. And, you know, I think it's with, with Sonia, it's a little bit easier because she's used to playing off ball anyway. But Olivia's used to having the ball in her hands. Um, so that's that's two players there who, who are very comfortable having the ball. And especially early in games, Hannah is very aggressive. I, that's something that I've noticed in the first quarter of games, she is really getting after it on the offensive end. Um, how much of a challenge do you think that'll be integrating uh, those three players, uh, specifically uh, Olivia and, and Hannah into the lineup? Yeah, I think the challenge is Olivia and Hannah because one of them's not going to have the ball in her hands. And I think yeah. we're so much harder to guard when you have that opportunity, when whoever gets it can go, we outlet, we go, whoever has it is going, the other one's running the floor. I think that Hannah has the ability to score more points off the ball. And I think that she would be better at the two, not better without Olivia. I mean, she's a great point guard at, and sure. I love her at the point, but Olivia, um, I think she, she is very good with the ball also. So I, I think they can obviously play together. I think they would be great together. The nightmare for the opponent, who are you going to guard? How are you going to match up with them? Um, and I think it can be a situation where, you know, they take turns, whoever has the ball, whoever gets the outlet, it would force them to get in and rebound a little bit more because they want to have the ball in their hands. So that could be right. a good thing. Agreed. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of Hannah being at the two, Olivia coming back. But again, Nick Neil preaches in practice. If one of the guards gets it, like our, our final destination is a bucket in, in transition. And that's been Notre mm -hmm. Dame basketball for a long time. So I think that the two of them together is lethal. You have to pick your poison uh, when you're an opponent, which is going to make them even better. I think also in terms, if you think of rest and minutes, Hannah's, that's a lot on her body as a freshman. And we've never, like historically, we've never had a very big roster or have gone what, I don't know, coach, like maybe nine, maybe, mm -hmm. nine, yeah. you know, um, but it's worked, you know, as we've seen. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And I think what I've seen early on is, uh, and this isn't critiquing Hannah, but there's certain buckets in transition that I think with Olivia out there, we would easily get. Um, but then again, that just comes from experience. And it could be, you know, having a better balance of scoring and distributing. Um, because with Olivia, some games, she could come out with 13 assists and then it could be six assists, which is considered a quiet night for her, but she'll have 24 points. Um, so I think that in terms of rest, it's really good to have another body. It's more transition buckets that are going to be uh, executed. And I think a, a matchup nightmare for the other teams. Yeah, to me, it makes a lot of sense to have Olivia as the main ball handler because A, uh, you can't sag off of Hannah because she's she's a great shooter. She's shooting forty eight percent from three, and then that allows then allows then Olivia to um, you know get to the basket right, and that's that's her that's her big uh, that's her that's her big uh, talent there. And and if and if the opposite end of that, if Hannah has the ball, you can sag off of Olivia a little bit because she is not a great outside shooter. Um, and it also opens up a lot of like the small ball lineups um, with with Sonia at the four, um, and something that I talked to Neil about as well. Uh, Coach, are are you concerned about their their size? You know, I, I, we saw that against South Carolina. I mean, South Carolina is an extremely big team, um, and they're going to be big for everyone. I think that's going to be a a big problem for any con any any team around the country. But are you are you concerned about their size and um, their depth as well on on the inside? A lot of people are. There's a lot of concern about that. I think the depth, but I think the uh, the ability to go into the post and get a bucket, it, we're we're lacking that at yeah. times. Uh, I I think when Maddie's in the post, I think she does a great job in there. I think we need some more consistency in the scoring from our bigs, um, and that and that is a, a huge concern of mine. I think I think that having that person in there, who you know we had on our best team, Jess Shepard, Brianna Turner. I mean, we we had such lethal post players. And I think that's an important thing. Our guards are, play with anybody in the country. I mean, our guards are as good as anybody. And I think that we, and if you look in the ACC, Liz Kitley, and I mean, other than that, I don't think there's a great post player in the league. I, I think uh, South Carolina has got a huge advantage. Um, obviously she's, she's a tremendous player, um, but really she didn't even hurt us in that game in the first half. We, we, we lost that in other ways. So yeah. um, I, I think it, it, defensively, I think we'll be fine matching up with Virginia tech. I think that's the only really strong post player in our conference. What, what do you think about that, Dara? Agreed. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, Nat's had a couple of good games in the last couple yeah. of games. She, she's yeah. come up really well. Um, really she's, active. Been, she's been good there. Yes. Yeah, very, very. Um, what do you think? What do you, what do you see from Kylie there? Just in terms of playing inside. Well, I think we need more consistency. She'll have a game where she's capable of getting 16 or 20 and then a game where she gets four or six. So, I'd like to see that consistency um, in every game. Okay, uh, Dara, what, what, where where is your best? Like, because we, we talked about Cassie, she's had a couple of big games too. Um, when they when they go when they go small ball, the the thing about going small is that like Maddie's a big a, a very good shooter from the outside as well. Like, she's very good on the elbow. She's good from sh sh shooting threes. Um, I, I I'll put this to both of you because I, I think about this a good amount. Like. Can, can Notre Dame play small with Olivia? Can can Notre Dame like effectively play small against good teams if Olivia is not in the lineup? Because Olivia is such a good rebounder, you know. Like that's that's a, another good skill of hers. She can get the ball on the uh, defensive rebound, and then and, and then the team can push, and that's a, a huge advantage for Notre Dame playing small. Can they play that way without without Olivia in the lineup? And I'll, I'll go to coach first. Absolutely. I, I love small ball. I think that yeah. that's our best lineup is when you put Maddie at the five. She's hard to guard for the other team center. They don't want to be yeah. going off flare screens and trying to right. pick her up from the three point line. I think it's a huge advantage. And if we can extend the defense and, and keep it out of the post, I think that we'd be fine defensively. But offensively, that's a heck of a lineup. I, I really like when we go to that one. Yeah. Offensively, I mean, Maddie's versatile. You, She can pick or pop. Yeah. And already early on, teams have run into a struggle against guarding her specifically in the ball screen. Um, but I think defensively, it can work too. I, and I told the team this by all means. Like, I don't know what you guys did at halftime of the South Carolina game. But like their first quarter compared to the, the other three quarters in that game, post defense wise, was like night and day. Like I thought from the first five minutes of the game, if we kept playing post defense like that, we were going to win the game 
it really startled South Carolina. It made them go into other options, which made them uncomfortable. Um, and against a team like that, that likes to run and look for a lot of consistent uh, schemes within their offense, it's going to help us a lot. It's just a matter of doing it for four quarters. You can't do it for five minutes and then let Cardoso catch the ball at the bottom of the backboard. You're just, you're doomed. You're in the mud then. So, and that's leadership. Are you going to do it for 10 minutes or are you going to do it for 40? And if they can do it for 10, they can do it for 40. So I think that it will work. It just has to be consistent for four quarters. How important has the has the last couple games been for players like Emma Rich and uh, Anna DeWolf? Because I feel like Anna in the first few games was, was really struggling. It seemed like she was struggling to really find her place, especially in the offense. Like, where are my shots coming from? Where are my sweet spots going to be? And And I think Emma was just a matter of, like, getting out there and getting um you know get getting reps basically she needed to get minutes out there she she has one of the prettiest strokes uh, i think you you've seen in uh you can see out there uh it's very easy movement like not a lot of moving parts looks very repeatable which is what you want looks, i mean i don't, don't want to speak out of turn it seems very similar to marina frankly um just very, very smooth out there but um how important is it to get anna going i, I feel like she's you know she she starts she plays a ton of minutes uh, but if she's not contributing offensively, especially in the corner with corner threes, catch and shoot type plays with Hannah distributing, um, I, f- I feel like that's going to be just kind of a liability for Notre Dame. Uh, and that has to improve. She, she looked, she played very well against, um, against ball state in the last game, just seven of 10 shooting three of five from three, 17 points, um, six rebounds there. H- how important is it to get her going for this team? Uh, and I'll go to you first, Derek. I think so far we've seen, we already know what we're going to get out of Hannah uh, yeah. and Sonia. And AD was very consistent at Fordham. Um, and you might be right. She might be trying to get her feet wet. It's a new conference. It's definitely bigger. Uh, the, the game here is now more physical. It's faster. Yeah. Um, and a lot more things happen. Um, so I think that for our team specifically already with a limited roster, like the more that you're going to get out of her, the better that we're going to be because she also brings that veteran experience. So it's just, again, consistency. She has to do that every single night. Um, and then it's going to take, you already know, it's like if scouting wise, the main focus is going to be all on Hannah. Um, but that relieves pressure from her. If people like AD, you know, not just AD, Cass, KK, if the more people that can get going, the better. Um, and I think that's that's also good for her because down the stretch, she, we talked a lot about Maddie in a leadership role, but I think that leadership also has to come from her specifically too. I think the speed of the game got both Emma and Anna. Uh, they are not used to that kind of competition. Your, your first game, you're playing South Carolina and you're looking at the yeah. incredible athletes on the other team who are just going by everybody on our team. And I think that that kind of probably made them step back, maybe they lost their confidence even a little bit and went like, holy cow, this is a whole different level than I'm used to. Uh, Emma coming from high school, Anna coming from a mid-major. And I think now these last couple of games, like you mentioned, Greg, is perfect time for her to kind of get back and say, no, this is what I can do. I'm getting my comfort now. Um, I know where I'm going to be here. And Dara's right. She could be a really good leader for this team. I think she brings a lot of experience. She works really hard defensively. And uh, I, I think that she's going to be, she's just going to continue to get better as the season goes on. And I think, I think the, the improved, improved play allows her to be a leader. Then it's hard to be a leader when you're not performing, you know, like, especially when you're new to the program, it's like, it, it's, we were talking about holding people accountable. It's hard to hold people accountable when you're, you're not kind of doing your role yourself, you know? And so I, I think the improved play helps her to take on a le- more of a leadership role and I think the consistency and effort, you know, and that's something that a, a senior brings. Dara talked about this a little bit. Like Dara, she she didn't have, um, you know, last year you didn't have a great start to the shooting, but there was so much more there. And you, you plus you had a ton of credibility in the program already. So it allows you to be a leader there. So I think that really helps um, Anna just in, take on a leadership role, the improved play. Um, Coach, some final things on the team here. When you When you watch them, do you do you take on a, a kind of a mind of 
man, I'm, I'm, I'm really concerned about these areas of the team, or do you see just kind of the potential aspect? Like which way do you, which way does your mind kind of go on that? Like, do you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, how, well, how, do, how do you evaluate them? Right 40 now? years, I looked at the problem areas. <laughs> That's yeah, the yeah. way I've always looked at the game. It was yeah. never quite good enough right there. It was yeah, always something yeah. we could get better at. So I, I'm concerned about the defense, the defense to start the season. We're not a great defensive team. We've got to figure that out maybe with Hannah up on the ball, some kind of trappings, some other thing, mixing in different looks. You know, we, we've got to figure that out because we are not capable of guarding the ball. We, we have a real hard time containing the ball. I think that's that's number one issue. De transition defense was a huge problem in the beginning. And you're not sure if we fixed it because we haven't played a team good enough to really hurt us no. yet. So I think we're going to see that when we play Tennessee next. I, I think defensively we're, we're the – the biggest issues I have. And then finding your identity, like, what are we? W what is our strength? Are we going to be able to, to get anything at a high low? Or are we going to shoot a lot of threes? We're going to be a transition team. I don't think we've figured out who we are yet. And so when, when it comes down to crunch time and we need a bucket, I think we're still a little unsure. You know, Hannah's going to probably come off a ball screen. We know we got that, but what else are we going to be? So I, I think there's a lot of problems with shot selection that we've got to really nail that down when we play some good teams. Do you think that's fixable prior to Olivia coming back? When I say what, what I'm referring to is the identity of the team. Do you think they can really truly find that if if Olivia is not out there somewhat soon? Oh yeah, I mean I, I think every team has an identity and playing to your strengths, knowing what your strengths are individually and as a team, and playing to those strengths with everybody doing their job. Do what you're capable of. Having the self awareness to understand what you're good at and doing that in every game and having that consistency. That's where you see really good teams. When you look at a team like Colorado, they're not especially talented, but they know who they are and they play within themselves. And that's something that I don't think we've learned yet. Uh, what have you seen on that, on that front, Dara? I think that was well said. I think it's still early. And unfortunately we have had battles with uh, some injuries, but I think over mm -hmm. time we'll start to see it. Um, and I think the biggest thing that coach said is do what you do and do it well. Don't come out of your role. Don't try to do too much, especially when you're trying to figure things out. And I think, yes, shot selection, like people come in the game, like jacking corner threes is that's not helping, you know? Um, and that's mm -hmm. something that unfortunately you have to do it first in order to learn from it. Um, so I think that I know, we beat Ball State by a lot. We beat Chicago State by a lot. But those games are still really important um, when it comes to finding the identity because a lot of it is going to come down to habits. Um, are we going to keep pushing in transition and be the team that we've been historically? Um, and then when when is everyone going to match Hannah's intensity on defense? That's Those are my concerns early on. Yeah, I think, I you know, just the fact that that again, Sony's out, and I think that really hurts them. But I also think it helps, like it, it, in the long run, it'll be viewed as a positive because it, it allowed you know Emma to have a bigger role. It had Anna to have a bigger role. It might have forced Maddie to be like, you know what, like I am going, I need to be a leader now. And once you go there, you don't go back from it, right? Like you keep that role. And so I think that in the long run, that could really help the team um, in terms of finding an identity, uh, finding their shots, creating better shots. Um, running more uh, offense through players who right now, um, you know, Dara talks a ton about being comfortable, being uncomfortable, you know, and I think a lot of the girls are in, um, or excuse me, a lot of the ladies are in uncomfortable situations right now. And that's okay because it's against teams that aren't as good. They've got Tennessee coming up, um, which could be a struggle and we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I think it's very important for these reps to take place. And then that, that will allow the team to grow. I think, from what we'll see from them uh, going forward, um, you know, into into March, February, March, that's when the team's really gonna really gonna show up and shine. Um, anything else, Coach McGraw, on the season? You know, Dara talked about uh, you know kind of a final thought about you know a prediction. I, I don't know if you have a prediction, but just kind of where where do you uh, where do you come out on this team um, in terms of their overall prospects? I think KK Bransford may be the X factor. She may oh, be the person because, you know, we lost, we didn't have her in the beginning. And yeah. she's somebody that's smart. She really understands things. And I think that she can really give us a lift in a lot of different ways. Um, she can do a lot of different things, rebounding, 
passing, setting screens. I mean, she's somebody that I think is that going to be that person that's like, we got to have her on the floor because she adds so many things uh, for this team. I, I think we have great potential. And the question is, can we play smart? Like that, my teams have always been smarter than the other team. Honestly, we we won so many games because we had so many smart players that just knew time and score, shot selection. I, oh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go out and guard this kid, so I better give her a cushion because I know where she's going to go. I got to go help in the post. I have to do other things. So I think we thought the game and we really understood the game. And I think that was a big part of our success was how smart we were. Yeah. Well, you've got a, a, a Muffet McGraw disciple at the at the helm right now and uh you got to trust that uh through that tutelage she's going to be able to find a way to to get to the ladies playing the way that uh she wants them to play uh she she you know there was there was a lot of adversity last year and i and i thought she uh represented herself and the team very well there so uh we can end it there thank you so much coach mcgraw for coming on this is a great conversation uh learned a lot about the team learned a lot about the way that you, you think about basketball um, the conversation on accountability was fantastic. So uh, thank you again for being here and congratulations on uh, on the honor of, of the statue going up. We all look forward to that on December 17th. Thanks, Greg. It's great being with Dara. I think if I ever need a TA, I think she could teach a leadership class at Notre Dame. You never know. Let's go. I mean, look at she's in, in, be in between in between roles, right? She's got she has so many hats she's wearing right now. Uh, but hey, we, we can add, we can add another one. So yeah. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please like this show. Please subscribe to the show. Please hit the notification bell. You know whatever it is, we're going live. Darren and I will be back next week talking uh, more basketball, a uh, little bit of the men as well. Well, she she did the men's game. Uh, I think it was a couple of days ago. They had a nice victory over the weekend. So have a good day, everyone, and we will talk to you very very soon.